Whew. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sitting down right now. Uh, and I'm at it. So, I dealt with some laundry and putting away my stuff. Yeah. I'm going to bees. I might continue my uh, VIP Zero series. Your what? VIP Zero streaming series. What is that? It's uh, It's on the newest server. And you start off VIP zero. You're not allowed to spend any money, and you see how far you can get. Trying to make finals, win guild showdown, that okay. sort of thing. Can people actually um, buy money to spend on it if you want to, though? Yeah, on the server they can. Yeah. It's just a challenge for the guild. Okay. Does let people let you that your that are supporting you like the fact that you're encouraging VIP zero? Yes. They do. Yeah. Oh, okay. The uh, the it's funny. The uh, the GMs actually offered to do server announcements for and do gold giveaways for the VIP Zero series okay, cool. over the casual streaming. I was surprised. But they, uh, they're on holidays at the moment, so oh, yeah? I have to wait till they get back so I can give away gold. Besides tonight, tonight I just give away gold because it's Sunday for uh, the showdown. So do that for about a couple hours every day. Wow. Yeah. I'm sweating. Oh, you're saying wow because you're sweating. Sorry? You're saying wow because you're sweating, not because yeah. I play two hours a day. Look, like, that's not no, a lot of time. wow two hours a day. Actually, I said wow with that. Oh, okay. Because two hours a day is a lot. thing would be streaming, you know? Yeah. That's... Hmm. Might be good. Hmm. Hey, these might be the best, actually. I'm gonna need those. Oh, oh, yeah, but... I did have these at the dollar store for like four bucks each. Yeah, but you didn't want them. Good. No, they actually might be good. It's just I didn't hadn't used them before. I have so many different. Kind of, well, I have a few different kinds. The only four or five kinds now. Okay. Of a container to pack them in, so I'll have to see how it all works. The only huge advantage that I can get is um, sealed leak. Yeah. Because I have a hundred tickets on my other account, I can just trade wins. So if I have a hundred tickets, then I'll get what like. 25 wins or something, and that's like enough medals. Definitely, I just need like five or six sealed leagues to get like the the PUP shop rewards, so I can make top eight and go from there. I'm not gonna win post or anything. It's, there's a guy who's VIP nine day three. That's two grand. It's more than you. I need to play World in a week. What? I was wondering where you were. No, I've been doing all sorts of other things. I've been like... <sighs> well, I was punching all my comics into that database, but that was even while I was still playing a little tanks when I was doing that. But then I um, added all, like I picked up a new case of miniatures that was sitting over there, and I punched in those, and I punched in some cards, and did some... Like, I don't know, I guess, I don't know if I call it AC, OCD. So I don't track everything I own. Just... Just something. certain things, yeah. You know, I don't. I have tons of like Warhammer, all my 40k Warhammer stuff. I don't track, but that's also because it's more difficult to track. Why is that more difficult to track? Um, is there no online service? Is that what you mean? Well, no, no. Actually, I use spreadsheets for most of my stuff. Oh, okay. Um, it's because I only use I use online service for all my books and my um, comic books, but not for my role playing game books. Hmm. So I possibly could for open game, but games, but... I think you probably could. Um, I think Goodreads has a lot of... I, just, I don't... I bet I bet a lot of the more obscure stuff they wouldn't have there. Goodreads like, they is... they wouldn't have the right printings or editions. The, Goodreads is a resource online? What's that? Goodreads is a resource online, or...? It's a website, yeah. Okay. I track all my novels on, on okay. Goodreads. A couple years ago, 
I spent like after I got laid off, I spent like a week punching in like you know five hundred novels. Oh my days. god! Yeah, well, it, it gives me something to do. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I like doing that kind of stuff. Oddly. Really, the kind of stuff I should do is more practical, but yeah, but you know, <laughs> it's something, some sort of hobby that doesn't cost you any money or anything like that. Yeah. Well, you already spent all the money on the uh, yeah. the books themselves. Some cells. No, I'm going to cut down on my comic books at that other place. Yeah, it's just too well, much. Well, I caught up on all, pretty much a lot tons of the stuff that I wanted anyway. Okay. And she doesn't really give me any deals, so. No. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I afford a business. That's true. And Dave actually brought in a whole bunch of stuff I had ordered like eight months ago. Really? And he eight months ago. But I don't buy it. I mean, but, but then again, I, it's not like I had mentioned it. Like, I was actually kind of lucky that they didn't have the stuff, that stuff at the other place, because I would have bought it there if they had it. Right. Because I remember looking for it. Like, all my Atomic Robos that I ordered. Whatever those are. Yeah, it's a graphic novel about Atomic Robo. Atomic Power Robo. Yeah, the VIP... Oh, my God. The VIP 9 guy's on a 50-game win streak. Are you playing tanks now? Yeah. Are you playing Darkest Dungeon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Curtis said he played that. So it's, not, it's not as hard as... It, like, they fixed one thing. Yeah. After I made, put a post in an angry rant about it. Did they actually? Yeah. And credit? I don't know if but they fixed the thing I was complaining about. And, and just fixing that one thing... Because it was that thing where people would do an area... Like, yeah, area like, effect crit. And it would crit everyone. That's really strange that they... And they, it was fixed, fixed like, within a couple days. Huh. And maybe you weren't the only one ranting. Maybe. That's pretty cool, though. And just fixing that has made it... Fine, and I've kept this same... Like, I've had a few deaths, but how many deaths have I had? Oh, more than I thought, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six deaths. Which ain't too bad. Oh, I know what I'm going to do, right? I just recruited a bunch of new people because I expanded my uh, roster. You so recruit, you recruit spies for... Uh... <laughs> for uh, what's the class called? Recruit spies for something. I don't know. Waterdeep. Never mind me. Okay. You're babbling again. I know. I tend to babble. I'm like a babbling brook. You're like a babbling brook. I just. Of evil. Of, of evil. I'm like, I just said that, Scott. Get it together. No, you just gonna let them die. I don't care if they die so much because three of them are brand new. I haven't um, put any resources into them at all. I mean, I'll bring some. I'll try to keep them alive, but I'm not going to spend a huge. Like normally, I spend thousands of stuff investing in equipment when they go into the dungeon, right? right. And you don't get any of that back. Like, uh, ever. Even if you don't, yeah. Even if you come back and you don't use, like everything goes away, huh. which is one of the things I complained about. And it makes sense for some of this stuff to go away. Okay, your food might go bad, right? Yeah. But why do, do, do your unused shovels go away and your unused torches? And same with the other stuff, like medicinal herbs might go bad. Um, damages, I don't know why they would go away. Anti-venom might go bad. Your, why would your keys go away? Holy water might lose its luster. So a few of the things, maybe. Yeah, reasonably might, you know, disappear. Yeah, you but... know, especially if, you know, if you're like a big DM. You know, like the game is supposed to be, right? Which is right. fun. Um... Notice my stack of comics that I punched into that database is getting smaller. Yeah. Because they've punched, they've been adding them. Oh, so that's good. So I get good. to uh, and I get points the on their website. I don't know what to do with them, but I have like two hundred twenty-two points.
search of the man. Darkest dungeon. So, did he pay for it then? Because you have, I think you have to cost money to Darkest Dungeon. Yeah. So he bought it? Yeah, he buys video games. Well, it's not bad. It's only like 17 bucks and to have a little game. Yeah. yeah. It's still in beta or? It's early release, so yeah, early it's still in beta. There's whole sections that aren't even unlocked yet. So I did my first third level dungeon though, because when nice. people get to third level, mm -hmm. they refuse to go on the lower level dungeons. They're like, like nah, it's what bitches. Time. So I'm like, oh, so I can't, I can't overpower my way through the weaker stuff. So I was leveling a bunch of my guys up, and I'm like, crap, I'm going to be forced to go through the mid tier stuff soon. Okay? If you run out of guys, I guess. Because most of my guys were getting up to level three. Right. But then I, um, so I did one mid tier one level level three thing, and even okay, so my guys are level three. Their weapons are level 3, yeah. but their armor is still level 2, and their skills are still level 2. Right. So they need to, um, you know, enhance those, right? So it was actually tough, because, like, the first three rooms, I was almost getting wiped out. It's like, Jesus. Fuck. Like, I was running into new monsters, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's but the, always fun. Yeah, but I, you know, then I um, barely kind of stayed alive. I had a bit of luck. I almost lost my grave robber, and I think I got a bit lucky that I didn't. Um, that would suck to lose a level 3 person, right? And then you have to level somebody else all the way up, right? Yeah. And uh, then I, mean, I, like, I, it was an overnight expedition, so I did my camping, I think, if I remember correctly. Was it for me? Anyway, I managed, but then, because all the encounters were early, at the end, there were practically no encounters. Um, and then I, I finished the, the thing, because you had to explore 90% of the dungeon, there was one room left, so I'm like, ah, oh, I might as well go there anyway. And then on my, on my way there, like, this whole, this really tough group of things appear. I'm like, fuck, I should have, should have gotten out like him. I normally do, right? Yeah. And then, so I, and then one of my people, then they did a bunch of damage. One of my first people was at death's door. And it's like, fuck, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to click this button. I never tried before. It says run away. Yeah. Because I thought when you, when you run away, you lose all the stuff. I thought I might lose all my stuff. But you, I didn't. I just ran to the back of the last room I was in. Hmm. So it actually wasn't bad at all. So I'm kind of surprised they even included that because that makes it kind of easy. But you never pressed it before. I'd never clicked on Runaway before, no. Oh, you monster. It sucks having 19 HP. <laughs> Yeah, the guy VIP 9 has legend armor, and it's just stupid. So what did uh, Curtis think of the game? He liked it. He didn't think it was that hard. Well, maybe because they, they took out the area of effect attack certain before he started playing. They, what did he buy it? It was a while ago. He, oh. he hasn't played it for a while. Okay. I don't know. 
Uh, he, you know, uh, but he's really good at games, so yeah. I mean, as I said, even said in the post, I was like, you know, I know there's some people that seem are claiming it's too easy, but for a casual gamer like me, uh, yeah. And the the two things I complained about were the area of effect attacks and uh, the fact that you your stuff goes away on you. You know. Yeah, it disappears. That stuff that doesn't make. Then that just that just doesn't make sense. That kind of bugs me in a thematic point of view. You know? Right. Yeah, like, I know what you mean. And I also, I don't like min-maxing. You know what I mean? Why is that? Do you think you should be able to grind? I like um, playing a little bit of everything, you know? Wow. It's, my <laughs> people are sure taking a beating. One first level guy with him. In the level three dungeon? What's that? In the level three dungeon? No, in the level one. Oh, the level threes wouldn't go there. No, because you, you don't always have to go in the level three. You can pick, right? Yeah, but so, uh, so I took my level three guys in the level three dungeon, got some resources, managed to expand my roster, recruited some zero level guys, and took them to a level one dungeon. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Misses in a row. I don't know if that's so. No, I didn't. Holy cow, my zero level guy did a 20, 23 damage crit. He says, I've come to collect. When I did the level 3 dungeon, I came back with so much stuff. Do you know how the game works? Uh, no. I support you already. Um, when to expand your town, you don't do it with cash, you do it with heirlooms. There's four different types of heirlooms. There's like statues, paintings, deeds, and medals. Mm -hmm. And to expand, let's say I, I want to expand my inn. I can expand. There's three different areas in the inn. There's like the brothel, the inn, uh, the, the drinking thing, and the gambling den. 
and you need like a certain amount of metals or combinations. There's always two things, right? Like you might need like four metals and four um, beads to expand the in the first step. And the first step, let's say, gives you a 10% discount. And then to expand to the second step of the um, of the gambling hall, I mean gambling hall, you need um, you might need more stuff, like say six of one thing and six of another. And then that second step would give you a different kind of bonus. Let's say 10% bonus stress heal. Oh, you okay. can use it, right? And the third one it gives you opens up a second spot in the in the uh, thing, right? And then different things like so like level hall. up higher. Hmm? So level up higher than three, or is that five. it? They go up to five. Does it get three slots? Um, everything's five slots. Oh. For the end, like it, it, all the buildings have five slots for people to stress heal. No, no, they start off with three. Oh, they start okay, off with three, gotcha. But you can expand it to three each. Right. And there's. Grind in the PvP. Here I am. Well, another VIP. Great. Just <laughs> what I didn't want to see. It's funny, I'm reading this comic book from 1975. Wow. So I downloaded them, because I can't, couldn't find them, if, like, you can't buy them anywhere. They're all Sometimes they're either printing them in the essential, like, I don't know if you've seen the Dave store, they'll be, like, the essential Iron Fist, and they'll reprint a whole bunch of his stuff from early stories. So he's got the essential Iron Man and a few other ones. Okay. And anyway, this is the essential Iron Star Kung Fu. I don't know if you know who he is. It's no. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I have a few of his comics, but not the ones from the... I mean, so he does perform like that. Sorry, I'm stupid. Um.
anyway, they're talking about the ozone layer and how, you know, it's degrading, which is interesting. I didn't know it was quite, I thought that was something that came up in the 80s. You know what I mean? Or you're not paying attention. You don't care. No? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you're like, fuck you, I thought we were talking about that. Kind of... No, not at all. Have you heard of the shovel smack heard around the world? The shovel smack? The shovel smack heard, heard around that the world. Like a play on the shot heard around the world? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, it's on a YouTube video. You want to watch this? Of course, it's on a YouTube video. Yeah, give me a minute. I'm going to finish the uh, world boss. You've been reading books lately? Uh, not a whole hell of a lot. No. Why? What's interesting? Um, book. I'm trying to. Uh, I might try to get it if I see it in a used bookshop. Called Marooned in Real Time. Marooned in Real Time. And it's written by, um, well, an author. It's like a future tech kind of writer. And basically what happens in the book is that the first set of scientists to develop a technology that basically transcends the singularity, like Transcends human knowledge as we have it to such a degree that all bets are off. Okay. Basically, it takes over. Yeah. You know, and what it is is that they can create these um, bubbles around something. And they, at first, it starts off with you know it's called like a personal force field, right? Like it poofs around you, and then nothing can affect you. Period. Right. But and then what they do is that when people misbehave, or what they actually for certain apparently in their review I was reading, they 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 stop all the nukes. They just put them in the bubbles. Oh my. You know, it's like oh, there you go. Now you guys have no weapons. And then anytime anyone does anything they don't like, they throw them in one of these bottles. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't do anything. And then, then they, because they're afraid of losing their power, they regress technology for everyone else. Oh, my. To kind of like a horse and carriage kind of thing, right? Wow. Um, and then it turns out that these things are actually stasis bubbles where everything's frozen in time. So it's Ooh. not like people are trapped inside the bubbles moving around and doing stuff. They're just frozen in time. So sometimes people, when they want to... Um, so they start throwing criminals in these, in these things... And lock them away until a future point when they can be dealt with. Right. You know, when they figure technology or, you know, whatever, or justice has got to a system, you know, where they can cure or deal with these people appropriately. Someone wants to travel to the future. What's that? Or someone wants to travel to the future. There's no time travel. Um, well, you get frozen in the... You're, you're frozen, but you can't move backward in time. You just go forward. Travel to the future. You exactly. Yeah. Um... And there was something else where, like, the, the victims get thrown in a stasis bubble as well, but they come out before the other people. I don't know. And I, and I know that's supposed to, uh... Stasis. But there's a couple of books he, that he wrote that are set in, in the same world, but they're not part of a series so much. But apparently, in one of them, they get thrown in one of these things for like 40 million years. Whoa! And they come out, and like everyone's dead. And they're like, huh? 
What happened? How did they get out? Well, eventually they're tiny. Oh. By the amount of energy it's put into them. I see. And then it's kind of, kind of becomes like a locked room murder mystery because somebody gets killed. You know, or actually somebody get next time, and they decide to hop through time, like putting themselves in stasis. Yeah. Trying to, like, until, I guess, maybe, I can't remember, maybe to see if the Earth is going to get in better shape, because it's, like, not in good shape when they come out. And in one of the times when they go in stasis, they realize when they come out that they accidentally left somebody behind. And that whoever that person was, obviously, lived out more like time than died, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> you know what, by themselves. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, who who left this person behind? Like, how did that happen? And they, and they treated it as murder. So the person's been dead for 10 million years. So to them, it was just seconds ago, because they turned, put themselves in stasis, and they come back. Yeah, you know? and then that's like and that. And it's like, oh, whoops, when we put ourselves in stasis, somebody wasn't in the bubble with us, or what have you. Or didn't, you know. Hmm. That's a lot of money. Oh, press complete. Press the exit dungeon. And this. Oh, that's that's interesting when that happens. Because the mission is to complete all the room battles. Right. And there's three rooms left, but told me the quest was complete. So obviously, in the last three rooms, there's no encounters. But there's hall like in the room, no room encounters, but there are hallway encounters, right? <laughs> so I don't know if I should bother doing the hallway encounters and just try to get a little bit extra loot, possibly. I have enough resources. I got lots of food. I should keep going. Oh, and I also didn't realize you could eat food and heal. You don't heal much. So it's like 75 gold a pop for hit cricket point. Well, it kind of makes sense. But it, well, it doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't like the way they've done it, honestly. Like I, I agree, there should be some kind of method to deal with stuff in between combat. But do you want to watch the slot? The slap? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Someone get smacked in the face with a shovel? I didn't see this part. <laughs> Shit, I'm getting in there. <laughs> no fucking way. Locked up at the page. What is what is going on? Hang on. <laughs> Intel not... day twenty eight. <laughs> oh, there's a fucking bird. Oh. Okay. They're gonna fight. They're mad at each other. Right. Something to do with a guy, I think, maybe. <laughs> So she said something with no scratching? Yeah. Going on Josh Officer Films. <laughs> World Star. That's, that's awesome that she keeps her hands right in front of her face. I just punch her fist and then smack into her face. Then they resort to smacking. Yeah. Which is awesome. Hair pulling. Get up, get up, get up, guys, get up. Get up, 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 get up
Clap it. Pull up your head. Sit. Here's your hand. Come in on your head. It's a relatively civil fight. Yeah. You know, it's mediated. Those that are terrible, you know, what you expect from girls. And then. I know you don't watch stuff like this, but it's amusing for a reason. Well, for a bad reason. Is that all she did? I don't know what she did. Is that, wait, like, did she get both of them? How many moths did she have? What did she say? Yeah, how many, yeah, yeah. How many moths did she have? How many moths? I don't know. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright. What did she say? The auto is pretty bad on this. Hmm? The yeah. audio is pretty bad on this. <laughs> like I she keeps her hands right in front of her face, so. Like, probably don't have any. Probably don't have any. Unless you have your arm for spring. I don't know. See, that's some fucking good hits. So am I waiting for something, or...? Did you see that, those punches? Oh, she was actually clobbering quite well across the forehead there. Yeah, but am I waiting for something? Yeah. Sure, I am, though. She's tough, though. She's ready. She's getting her ass kicked. She's coming up for more. You're done, you're done. We can be cool. Come on. You right? Come on. Alright. You kicked me in the stomach again. Hey, don't come out. This is a bitch. You better put me in my face, baby. That's the point. It's a fight. Mm-hmm. Alright, that's not for me. Why the fuck off my eyes, you bitch? That is so awful. Now, who do you think is in the wrong there? Person who threw the shovel. Person who threw the shovel. Not the other person? Why would the other person be in the wrong? Because she was on the other person's property. She was told to leave. The other person left, and she pursued her. Like the girl in the black. Man, I know. It t- it took, I had to think about it, and I was. I wanted to sh- get your opinion. I wanted to look at the comments too, because I actually am. Um, but you know, the girl who was getting her ass kicked asked, told the other girl to leave because it was her property. She refused to leave. That's one count against the girl in the picture. The girl, then the girl in the black T-shirt left. Now she's doing a good go left to get a BB gun. She said, mm-hmm. but the girl in the pink shirt could have left at that point. Instead, she chose to pursue the girl in the black T-shirt, therefore keeping her. Keeping the fight, the conflict going, and putting, you know, keeping girl in the black t-shirt in danger, so to speak. And when you're allowed to defend yourself, you are allowed to escalate one degree past the, da- the danger that's being thrown at you. So if somebody smacks me in the face, I'm not allowed to blow their head off. <laughs> but if someone smacks me in the face and I punch him with a fist, I'm allowed to. Or if somebody punches me in the fist and I grab my umbrella and I smack at them with it, I'm allowed to. Like. Um, you're allowed to es- escalate to, and it also depends too. Like if I'm a 90 pound girl and some guy punches me and I shoot him, I could probably get away with it. But it also depends. Like I think when it comes to stuff like this, cops in the justice system has a fair amount of common sense. Like as long as you're not black. No. No, I'm serious. As long as you're not black, no, won't get racist against. <laughs> There's an excellent line from Community. 
There's one of the... Do you know Community, the TV show? Of course. Um, Britta, who's like all anti-authority, um, says there's a difference between prison and jail. A lot of people don't know the difference. Jail's where you go when you piss off a cop. Prison's where, where you go if you're poor. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, that's so true. <laughs> I would love a glass of Diet Pepsi. I would love a very large glass of Diet Pepsi. Oh, that's a shame. <clears throat> well, I have more involved, but they're cold. Mm, that's some cold Pepsi. I love yeah. it. Sorry, Diet Pepsi. So do you agree with me that the black girl, the girl in the black t-shirt, yeah, had uh, the right to defend herself with a shovel? Well, it, maybe not with a shovel, but to defend herself, yeah. I mean, she was getting her ass kicked. She left the fight and was pursued on her own property. Stand your ground. Well, that's, I think stand your ground is ridiculous. If you feel threatened, you're allowed to shoot somebody. That's stupid. If you, Or if you feel that someone's... Someone else is in danger. You're allowed to shoot the other third party that's threatening the other person. Yeah, kind of ridiculous. Stand your ground. Brilliant. What time did I throw my shit in my laundry? I do to you. What time did we get here? Um. Oh, look, oh, did I make any phone calls? Like, 
414. I texted you the second so time. 430? Yeah, maybe 430 ish. I grabbed it quick. 5. Shoot, man. Doesn't it take an hour or so? It takes an hour, yeah. But I know I phoned uh, Dave Dillon there yeah. right before 5. So and I've been here for a little bit already. Yeah, so this is the thing. When they're doing the area of effect thing, because you know you have hit points, and you also have stress, right? Yeah. So, and you would take double, like, crit damage, which isn't a lot from the area of effect, right? So, two to four or whatever. So, that wasn't a huge problem, but it was still suck. Um, but then, everyone would take a stress hit from being hit by a crit. Then they would take another stress hit for seeing somebody else can be hit oh, by a crit. So, it just multiplies. So, it was just like, oh... Holy crap, my people want to leave the dungeon now. And it's not barely, you know, barely in it. I can't believe we're doing world boss with like 22 HP. It's disgusting. Strangely enough, the easiest level is the one with the six attack um, little... Yeah, I, I apparently never did the world boss, so I don't much about it. Hey, oh. Hey, Sid. Come down if you want. See if Nate's there. Need to talk to him about GSD teams and stuff. You're probably not interested in such things, though, but who knows? No. Nate, you there? Yeah, I forgot my mouse today, so I won't be able to play tanks anyways. That's fair. I can disconnect this one from here. Actually. Oh, okay. Because it's just a little plug in the back, right? Like a little USB right. thing in this wireless. But whatever. I haven't, don't really care what plan I'm going with anyway. You don't? Not at all? No. Oh, we're going to change the plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, they also made this thing. It's like everyone must recruit one clan member by the end of the month. Well, when did this come up during the clan meeting? They wanted us to recruit, but it wasn't required. And then there was a sink in it, so I'm like, fuck that, so... I have a big enough clan already. I don't feel like... Because I'm not going to... Pain in the Yo. Yo. I have a feeling I'll get kicked out. If not for an activity. Sure. What is it you need? Because I'm not... Oh no, I was just uh, trying to help Zothos' deck a little bit. If not for an activity for not recruiting? Not recruiting. I guess you heard about that shooting where that guy shot those nine black people at the Bible study? Yeah. Yeah. I heard they caught the suspect. Oh yeah, they caught him the same day. Both apparently both one of his friends and his uncle called in to report them. They recognized the yeah. so That's good to know that, you know something like that. It was an that. isolated thing and that even the people like that would normally be sympathetic to him, call him, him right away. Report him in for because he gets a freaking murder. <laughs> One of my guys has the yips. 
has a bad perk, minus 5 accuracy, and then his worms foe. Fuck. Fuck, this guy. I also want to send them all home and say fuck you, guys. Fuck you guys, I'm going. It doesn't cost anything to recruit a new person. Fuck you guys, I'm recruiting new guys. You guys suck. That's pretty much it. At least get rid of them. Goodbye, Toby. It's been nice. No, that bad quirk. That is annoying. I mean, you can remove quirks, but it costs like a thousand gold. And uh, I live a week in the tree in the sanitarium. In the sanitarium? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Me no joke. Me no joke. Me serious. Yeah, do you want like do you want to see how you the, the how you develop your buildings or? Not really. Too much of a pain to come to the Mars. Too tough. Too it's tough. so hard. Too hard. You're playing a game. You're busy. I'm busy, Scott. Deal with that. Busy. Fuck you, old. Fuck you. I'm busy. There. I expanded my bar. Oh, there's six steps to the bar. So now my Instead bar. Instead of five. I thought it was five, but the bar. The first step, you increase stress recovery. Second one is minus 15% cost. Third one is increase slots to two. Next one is increase more stress recovery increase. The next one is increase cost again. And it's funny because in, in the um, in the town, there's somebody called the caretaker, and yep. he always takes up one of the slots on you. So like when you first start off, you have the bar, and it has three slots, and you have the abbey, which has three slots. It has like the prayer slot, the meditation slot, and the whipping slot. You can whip yourself, and and so and he's always in one of those spots, right? So then some of your people will only do certain things, like your first crusader so you just will randomly only take up a spot. Yeah, he'll randomly take up a spot. Like you might be in the brothel that week, or you might be drinking at the bar, but but you know that week. So it's annoying because so expanding something to a second slot is you know helpful because then then he uh, won't be. A Pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's rather annoying. Yeah, to expand my infirmary so that I, it has three slots because I'm currently at two, I need 72 statues and 32. Uh, How many damage. you get from an average run? Well, level one run, you might come back with like, you know, anywhere. Be, I don't know, it's tough to say. Um, you might come back with six of one thing, eight of another, two of one, oh nothing of another. Oh my god. But the third level one that I did, I came back with tons of stuff. I didn't try. try. You need a spreadsheet. I do. Fuck, I'm wondering if I should just fire all these new level ones that I put through one dungeon. Because they all got bad quirks and they all have stress. That means they. It's like 2,000 gold each to make them better. Oh, I know where I came down here. I said, I know why I came down here. What's that? To plug in my oh. computer. And then I totally forgot. Don't be forgetting. Don't be forgetting? Don't be forgetting, son. You know what happens to people who forget. They forget to get their shit done. It's funny, there's, um... Because the death penalty in the states is is contentious throughout the world, 
you know, death penalty in general, right? And in Europe, in Western Europe, like, I don't, I don't think Europe death penalty is allowed anywhere in the European Union, though I could be wrong. It's fairly rare. But some of the drugs, and I've heard about this before, <clears throat> um, the people that supply the drugs necessary for some of the chemicals for lethal injections, some companies will refuse to sell the states that have the death penalty. Really? Because they don't want, because they don't want to participate in what they see as, as you know, killing somebody. Right. Which is fair enough. Like I have mixed feelings about the death penalty. I don't have a problem with it overall, but I don't think it should be used haphazardly, even as it is. I think it should be used more rare than it is. You know? Because you just think here about all these black guys that, you know, are being freed in Houston because of DNA evidence now. It's oh, freeing God. them. Because Houston in the seventies, it seems to be particularly bad for a crime was committed rather than nearest black guy. I'm oh, sorry, awful. grab the nearest poor black guy. And especially if the guy had a criminal record of any kind for, like, you know, B&E or anything, or something. then just for that guy, he's as good as anyone else. You know, any other, as good as the real, as, you know, because they're getting... Good as the suspect. Yeah, and, and, you know, I don't think they, they, I don't know if they grabbed, like, like, non, like, black guys that had no criminal records, unless they're about to. You know what I mean? Then I'm sure yes. they would be like, yeah, fuck it. But they 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 were just like screw it. We're not even gonna bother trying to look for the guy. Yeah, they, no, yeah, we're not even bother. We're gonna grab the nerd. We grab the guy. He's black. He's got some kind of criminal record. We'll throw the crime on him, and, and he's gone. One more le- one more less, you know, blah, blah, and we're on the street. You know, and that's how I think the cops in the seventies dealt with it. That's awful. It's it atrocious. Because there's something called the Freedom Project. And they're just, like, people are getting freed. Well, I don't know if I should say left, right, and center, but a lot of them are getting, you know, freed. And they're probably doing it for precisely for that reason, you know, because the cops didn't actually do proper police work. Even in Canada recently, and I had a problem with this, like, ten years ago when I first heard about it. I thought it was ridiculous. Um, there, was, there was a thing going on where they were ensnaring criminals with something that was called the Mr. Big. Have you heard of this? Yes. Have I gone on my rant? You don't want to hear this again? No, I've heard this. That's not from you. Okay. So the Mr. Big is, I think, let's say we think you're guilty of something. Okay? Um, but we can't, we don't, you know, we don't, don't want any... to, we can't prove it through regular police work or we don't want to be bothered, which is how I see part of it, possibly. Or, well, whatever. Maybe not, but my frustration, my mind kind of goes there. So, anyway, so what we do is that we, and, and let's say you're kind of a shady character anyway. That's right. So we get somebody, let's say Curtis, who kind of knows you, not like a friend, but we get somebody who kind of knows you and say, hey, um, you're looking for work. I know this guy. He's a big time, you know, drug, drug, dealer. drug dealer. All you have, and it's an easy job. All you have to do. You know, it's keep your head down and run bags back and forth from this place to this place. You, you know, you don't have to have money. You don't, and they basically offer them something that's really good, like a job that's really, you know, pays. And you, yeah, you make like, you know, three grand a week or something. Right. You know, and then they, and they, they say, Jesus, then that's Curtis a lot of money. Me, and I'm really a cop. And Curtis probably is too. Maybe not. He might just be in the form. And I say, well, I want to offer you this job, but I want to know that I can trust you. What can you tell me to make you trust you? Trust me. And I say, oh, well, I heard you got they, the cops arrested you for this, but they couldn't pin it on you. Did you do it? And you're like, no, no, no. And I go, well, come on. I need to know that I can trust you. you have to, like, did you do it? You know? And and this is the part. It's, it's basically almost like a trap. They, it's not, they're not allowed to do it in the States. The States isn't allowed to do it. And the States, like, is ridiculous with some of the stuff they do. Yeah, I studied this in Law 12. Okay. And then you say, yeah, yeah, I did it, because you want the job. Exactly, Re- regardless of whether you did it or regardless not. Regardless of whether you did it or not. Then they arrest them. <laughs> Just on the confession. On the confession. And, like, sometimes they have some other possibly related evidence, and they try to say, well, it's part of this whole thing. But it's, it's a fucking ridiculous way to, to arrest somebody. Because you're offering somebody a reward. You're, you're promising somebody a reward for confessing to somebody, something, and it's not in an official set setting. You know, it's not like you're, you're sworn under oath. oath. So you're getting somebody to say something off the record to somebody that they think is a criminal and in exchange for a reward. And you think, like, is that going to be the truth? And just that recently, there was this guy 
who was arrested for, for like, killing his daughters or something. Like, they thought he, like, killed his three- and five-year-old or something like that. And they did this. I mean, they're big on him. And now he's free because of shitty police work. And who knows? Maybe he did do it, but now we'll never know because the police are fucking lazy. The police in that case. Yeah. That's just sad. Well, it's fucking sad. And people say, well, you know, now we need, you know, more laws. It's like, no, you, there are laws in place. You just have to be not be a fucking retard about it. Do I feel strongly about this? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it's, it's like, and I heard about this, and I was amazed that it was even legal. Some shady shit going on. Well, this is the police. It shouldn't be doing like it's bad. It's just bad police work, and it just has no sense. To it. You know, it has no common sense at all. It's like, okay, you're offering a reward to a criminal, and you already know the guy is like some kind of low-level criminal. And and it's just like the police and you. I was saying, but like they grab a guy, they know he's probably he's already guilty of some some small shit. He's probably guilty of some other shit, so fuck it. Let's, let's just bring let's him let's in. Do this ridiculous scheme to get him to confess on record. Off, you know, get him to confess. You know, using this roundabout means. And now let's throw him in jail. Oh, what? What, what do you mean, Your Honor? This isn't going to stick. Now this guy's free because you know. Oh, whoops. Maybe I should have just done the job properly. Mmm. Mm. Rant over. Yeah, sorry. No problem. I'm happy to listen, Scott. Well, Jeff, Jeff is so pro police, you can't tell him something like that. Yeah. Because he'll be like, well, the guy is probably, you know, guilty, blah, blah, blah. The police know better, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, no, no, no. Not no, all no. the time. Not all the time. Not all the time. Because there, there's cops out there, and some cops simply are so Dirty cops. They just, they're, they're well behaved, learned sociopaths, and they're just going to be, they're just going to do whatever convenient for them. They're going to, hey, I got a guy, Jeff, yeah, hey, this looks good in my record. Hey. Hey, or like, they're just lazy. Or they're just lazy. Or or they justify it because the guy's probably guilty of something. Or they think the guy's guilty. They legitimately think he's guilty. But they can't prove it, so they're using this method to try to throw him in jail. And, well, I have some sympathy for cops, and I guess who are like, you know, lately doing that. They're like, the fuck, you need to get this child molester off the street. Let's do this. Well, fuck. You should try harder using some other method. I don't know. You know what I mean? I do. I mean, it sucks. The situation, you know, where there are cops who are using it for that reason. But then there are the good cops on the other side. What's that? Plenty of good cops. Oh, absolutely, I know. But, but because it's Mr. Big Thing, like, these things just come get a bad rap. Too, right? You know, well, it's always going to come to the top. No, it's coming from the top end. Oh, coming from the top. Oh, you know, okay. It's it's like they're directed to do it, you know. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe, I don't know, actually, I can't say for sure. I mean, it could be, like, the person that did the investigation would say, hey, let's do this thing. Or maybe it's coming from, you know, some other kind of, some kind of director. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I don't know. Um, but Jeff's family was cops, eh? Like, his dad was, like, a high-level RCMP of some kind. His sister's a banker, PD. And then his uncle was in it as well. And, I don't know, he, he defaults to uh, believing that the police said the story, like, without even, like, considering it, even though he's saying, well, the cops are always right. Well, I mean, compared to criminals, criminals are going to be lying all the time, for sure. The cops, no, you know, they have jobs. They know how to do their jobs, in theory. All they have to do is do the police work properly, you know? Rant is over. Thank you, Bill. Rant's done. All done. Yay. Arch Where are all my cross There they are. You're invited for dinner if you want.
Maybe. Steak. Oh, yeah. I even like a link punch. Steak and ribs, Scott. I have a bunch of stuff I want to get done. I don't want to just come over and eat and leave. That's oh. Well, it's not yeah, right now. Not, not right now. Right. Like in an hour? Well, I, I eat like at 4.30. Or, or, no. Oh. Before I picked you up, I finished eating. Oh, okay. So, at 4, I finished eating at 4. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff I'm supposed to do today. I'm going to make a giant, I made one last Sunday, I made a giant Greek salad. Oh yeah, that's good. Greek salad's are good. Um, and it lasted me like a while. You still doing the smoothies? No, I haven't done smoothies for ages because they were giving me that really awful heartburn, remember? No, I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah, the orange juice. And, no, I, I, I told you about it because I was talking about what you use instead of orange juice. And I think I tried almond milk, which was disgusting. And then, but I might try coconut milk. Oh, okay. I have coconut milk and coconut water. Or, yeah, I think it's coconut milk. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah, it's coconut milk. For, for, uh, yeah, that's what uh, Melissa uses. Yeah, she's in pretty good shape. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not eating dirty. I'm just like, you know, healthy and slim. Melissa? Yeah. She's getting there. And she used to be, I wouldn't say, she was not big, but she was, you know, she had some extra, like, she, she was like, she bossy. So, wait. Yeah. Since, like, he was dating Connor. Yeah, you should have seen her when she was dating Dan. Mm hmm? He had a, a feederism uh, fetish. He had a what? Feederism fetish. You know what Who that is? Dan? He, her previous boyfriend. Before Connor? Before Connor, yes. What, he would feed her? Yeah. Like take a, a it's like a spoon or something you go baby. Like no, that? no, like take her to McDonald's all the time and try and make her fat. Oh. Because he was into fat porn or whatever. Really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, not don't be She didn't find out for a while. Oh, she she didn't know. She's just like he's always give, he's always buying me food. Yeah. <laughs> Does Melissa know you tell me all this, all this stuff? Uh, of course not! Okay. I mean, it's interesting to know. Because I don't have a lot of my own. <laughs> but, yeah. Don't let me push you how many stuff I should know. That is kind of funny. It is! It's hilarious! <laughs> It's it's good that it's over now that you can laugh about it. It's not happening anymore. And like, so he's dating like a fat chick now or something? I don't know. He he moved to Canada from Australia, like he moved after to, he moved to Australia from Canada. You mean? No. Oh, he's an Australian guy. Yeah, that they met uh, playing RuneScape. Okay. And he was he moved. You, you think okay? Here's a guy who can't meet a fat girl on the internet on his own. He has to meet some, a, like slim girl and try to make her. That's hilarious. Yeah, I know, right? You think, okay, guy, you went about this the wrong way. You're on the internet. You shouldn't have a problem meeting a fat girl. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yep. You would think so. I wouldn't say. You wouldn't say your own house and fire? fire and I lost all what would you do? What would oh. insurance cover? Nothing. Nothing? Well, you I don't have insurance. You don't have ranchers insurance? Nope. No your stuff's not worth that much? Well, I'd have to prove the value of it. Yeah. And also, I mean, it's like... Okay, I've already saved... Like, all it would pay was 10 grand, right? I think. 
You have to double check. There's apparently insurance that collectibles are extremely difficult to insure. Well, at least according to Dave. But then again, Dave likes his own. Let's um, <laughs> trash talking Dave again. But yeah. I'm sliding everything he said. Yeah. No, of course. Well, no, I mean, Dave goes like to talk. You know, yeah. Like, he was going on, I was talking about the technological singularity. It was Binge Cliff. I'm like, what? Binge Cliff, he says. What's a Binge Cliff? Look it up. Do you know what it is? Look it up. So if you don't know what it is, you're just saying this, and you don't know what it is. And he's, he needs to stick his head. And I looked it up, and there is I, there is a guy called Burner Revenge. He's actually he wrote that book. I'm sorry, called Maroon in real time. That's why. Um, and he, he's also, like, has written an essay on techno technology. It's like a famous essay. Right. But there's no mention of a cliff in it. Like, there's no, you know, so I don't know. I think they've not got his, you know, his information cross or something. Yeah, I was going to say. But there was a guy called Binge. And I almost texted because I couldn't even find this stuff on Binge for a while. Because, like, Google didn't have to give me a response. Um, Google response failed. Yeah. Google response failed, exactly. That's kind of surprising. But then again, there was no, on the other hand, there was also a change in it. So, wasn't complete. That's <laughs> for a reason. Um, oh, my brain collector. I love this model. Brain collector. Oh, it's awesome. So, I, and I think that was. The Dave likes to say. I bet Dave hates the fact that everyone has internet and can like disprove them <laughs> much more easily than they probably could have 15 years ago. <laughs> On the other hand, he is very well fed. No, no like one can read. So and hey, I'm going to show you this one. Yeah, I bought insurance. Like if somebody. If the fire was somebody else's fault and their insurance covered some of my stuff, great. You know, I might be covered for that, maybe. I don't know. What? They wouldn't have to pay you out even if they didn't have insurance? They caused the fire? Wouldn't they have to? I'm sorry, what? Wouldn't they have to pay you out regardless of whether they had insurance or not? Well, yeah, then, well, then you have to pay them for it. Yeah. Um, but if it was my fault, let's say I left the oven on, and it caught fire. Nothing. And whatever, and then I lost some of myself. Well, first of all, the other people's insurance could not have been possible. So maybe I should get it. But the thing is, is like, I think it's like 50 bucks a month. Is it? 50 bucks a month, I think? And, okay, so it's 600 bucks a year. I've been living on my own, let's say 20 years, or it's longer. Uh, so I've saved myself like 600 bucks a year, six grand. Well, I've saved myself 12 grand already just from by not having it, right? So it's already paid off. My gamble has paid off by not having it. Because really, that's what insurance is. It's a gamble. Yep. It's a gamble against yourself. It really um, is. And... Uh, the other thing is... Like, I guess it was because when I first looked it up, it was like 1997. My roommate was a guy named Nick. And my landlord, I went to be renting a bay this week. My landlord wanted me to get house insurance, or you know, records insurance. So I, I looked it up, and they're like, well, it's like, you know, 500 bucks a year each for, you know, for you guys to get it. So it's a thousand bucks a year. And the deductible was like a thousand bucks or something like that. So, if I had some kind of damage and it cost me 500 bucks, it was, would still wouldn't be over my deductible. If it, I had, well, I think maybe the deductible was 500 bucks. And then if I had some kind of fire and did a thousand dollars worth of damage, so it gave me 500 dollars, then that would just pay for my deductible. That would just oh pay for the cost of the insurance in the first place. So it would have paid itself off. It would have broken even. even. So I would have had to lose like two thousand dollars or more worth of stuff for it to even be worth it. So you're kind of calculating that, and you yeah, it's kind of calculating that, saying, "Well, it's not really worth it." Right. Especially the amount of stuff I had back then. It's like, well, I just the landlord wanted me to get it for his sake, you know. Cover his ass. Well, in case we didn't burn the house down. Yeah. Well, covering his ass. 
yeah, it's fair enough for, for a landlord to want. If I was a landlord, I'd want my people to have it, I guess, but it just seems as a render, there's no advantage to it. You know? Who's texting it? Uh, my mom. I don't know why I came over here. So it's cooler over here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you can feed my fish if you want. You can feed me the, you know, just so I later on. You don't have to. I was actually going to get more fish this weekend. Oh, yeah? But I slept in yesterday. Okay. Last, not last night. It's Friday night. I couldn't sleep like 5 in the morning. Oh, dear. And then I woke up after 3. Like, woke up at 3.30. So I had like 10 and a half hours sleep or something. And then this morning I couldn't sleep till like 6.30. And then well, I got up at 1.30. It was, fucking, I was so tired. Like, but I couldn't sleep. And I've been getting this a lot lately. Like I missed Tuesday. I didn't miss Tuesday. Like work. Because I couldn't sleep. Like I couldn't sleep Sunday nights. Uh, until like super late. So I only had like a few hours sleep. And then it happened again the Monday night. I couldn't sleep. And then I only had like a few hours sleep. I was like, "Fuck you!" Like I can't, one can't even drive to work. Yeah. Like I'll drive off the road. And I'm getting like this a lot, and I don't know if it's because I kind of screwed up some of my medication um a couple weeks ago. But that's getting a while ago now. Like, or if it's the heat. Definitely could be the heat. It's fucking hot sometimes. But I have a fan in my room. A fan that I should really bring out here right now. So fucking hot in here, in Heather. Why is it so hot? So hot. Yeah, when it comes to capital punishment, there are certain people I wouldn't mind pulling the trigger on myself. But I would don't feel the need to, you know. But I wouldn't have a problem doing it. They're like, well. So if you believe, if, if, you know, they were like, well, if you feel in capital punishment, so strongly you feel it. Like, for certain people, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Depends how many people they murdered. What's that? Depends how many people they murdered. Well, and how they killed them. Like, Robert Clover Olson, I wouldn't have had, wouldn't have a problem killing him. You know? Like, morally, ethically, like, he's just a monster. Glad he's died. He's a monster or whatever. Like, even until he died, he was constantly harassing the families of his victims. And like watching appeal after appeal and all that kind of stuff. You know who he is, right? Serial killer. Yeah. Murder children. Murder, murder, and rape children. Like, would rape them and like pound nails into their skulls. The hammer. Well, that's wonderful. Sorry. Yeah. It's a great image to have. Yeah. Just want to impress upon you, you know. Watch out for the skull. Bashing. You mean rape, that, murder. That, that kind of person? I wouldn't have a problem pulling the trigger well, it's not so much of a trigger anymore, is it? No, not well. Actually, in the states, yeah, they are. They're using. They are doing firing squads again. They have been for a while. Apparently, some guy made an issue. Some guy was going to be killed. Made an issue of it. He said, "I want to die for my firing squad. It's my right." <laughs> and the state went, "Okay." That's <laughs> not kind of fun. That's kind of odd. Well, I, I, I don't think they just agree to it. I think there was some, some court dealings. Yep, okay. But they... Well, you know, yeah, honestly, somebody wants to die. Got them die the way they want to die. I don't care. You would agree if they want to die. They should have... If, if, if the state allows them a choice of certain, certain methods, not any method, but certain method. If somebody says, you know, I'm going to die, so I'm going to apart my wild dogs. Well, that's just a little hard thing. Screw you. We're just going to shoot you. How did your dad feel with this kind of stuff? Is he pro-death? Pro he's, he's, he's Catholic, so. You should talk to him. I don't know. 
I think he's against the death penalty. You think he's against the death penalty? Because I know Catholics generally are. But, but he is also conservative, so. That's true. Do you feel your dad would go home like all my crazy gibberish? Not usually. Not usually, yeah. Not usually, but you have? Yeah. yeah. On occasion. Right. You like to go off on tangents sometimes. I just listen to you. Sometimes I agree, sometimes I disagree, sometimes I just keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Fair enough. Alright, so what do you think? Well, we all have our, our um, react, the way we react. But I react in a way that, in certain ways, you know, distrustful. Yep, I do. And other people have an assumption that the person of authority is correct, and as is the speedy I just think that criminal it's... slash teenager or what have you, that's, you know, that's just making shit up. I yeah. kind of fall in the middle. Well, yeah. I, I think it's based on the situation that either party could be wrong. Yeah. Some people are naturally distrustful of authority. Some people are naturally drawn to authority, right? Yeah. Well, I think old people are more drawn to authority. It's funny because... Like... What? Old people are going to be the, are the, the death of our civil liberties. I think. You think so? Not not directly. Like, that, that's their intention. Uh, because they vote for the conservative party more often than, than any other age. Yeah, but then they'll die off, and then, then what happens? Yeah, but, but then the, as people get old, they get more conservative because they don't want things to change. You know, they so. have, you know, certain things in a certain way, and they don't want things to change too much because they know they're too old. There's a fear in them that they won't be able to react and yield with it, and they might very well be right. You know, it's just hard to be old. You know, when when you're 20, you can start all over again. You know, even when you get 30, you can start all over again. When you have a pension and you're in your 60s and you want to retire in, in a few years, you don't want to rock the boat. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And I think a lot of things, a lot of shit slides by. Either that. You don't want to be doing it again. That's all right. I'm here to listen. I'm also organizing miniatures and investing. It's going to be such a giant mess on the floor here. I did warn you, though. Yes, you did. I'm not complaining. Yeah, I know that last time I picked up a case of miniatures. Yeah. I barely managed to kind of organize it and fit it everywhere, right? And it wasn't. Yeah, so this time, there was just no chance. 
So that's why I had to buy a bunch of new uh, containers and I'm just going to unload everything. And miniatures are taking things. over. Sorry? The miniatures are taking over. Yes. Well, I spent a few grand on miniatures over the last few years. I've spent a few grand on Mythos over the past few years. I don't have any miniatures. You don't have, and you can't sell your your account. I could. You can't legally do it. No, there you go. You officially do it, yeah. But yeah, you could. Probably get a grand back. Yeah. But I wouldn't do it. Yeah, they're talking about this drug. South Carolina supply uh, pentobarbital, one of the three drugs used in the state's lethal injection procedure, expired in 2013. Corrections Director Brian Sterling has made it clear to legislators that his agency can't buy anymore, even as 44 people are on death row in the state. All attempts to purchase more have failed. The problem in states nationwide. I've read about this before. Some are trying to, some are trying to find new drugs and new sources for drugs because, ph because pharmaceutical companies have stopped selling them for executions and pharmacists are reluctant to expose themselves to possible harassment. That's true. Like, if I was a pharmacist, not like, you know, a guy who works at a store, but like, work for, like, a company, and I sold drugs, and they used them to execute somebody, and then they found that person was innocent, and I go, look at myself up in a lawsuit. I don't know. It is the states. Maybe that's what they're worried about. Or maybe they're just worried about um, people banning, you know, well, that's actually more likely it's probably people going, like, don't buy products from this company. They sell... Boycotting? They, yeah, boycotting. You know, boycott this company because they sell drugs that kill people. Right. You know, even people getting killed by rapists and murderers. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Since lethal injection, this is talking about South Carolina specifically. Came in an option in 1995. Only three of 39 people executed have died by electrocution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even with dozens of inmates on South Carolina's death row, the next execution is probably five years away. What? Really? Yeah. Is that backtracked? Yep. Well, yeah, I guess because people have appeals. Like, the, the appeal process is for. For um, capital punishment are huge and they're mandatory. Like, I think the guy, like, even if you know the guy who is going to be executed, like, doesn't want to contest it, they still have to go through the formalities. He can't just waive his rights because then later on, if he changes his mind, he can say, "Well, I never had any of my appeals," and then it creates this whole thing. So they still go through everything anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, they have to go through the whole process. They have to go through the whole process, and it can be it can be go faster if the guy who's going to be executed doesn't contest. But I think they still go through go through it, and then and then they have to organize everything. It's it's very bureaucratic, and then if they're short of drugs, I guess <laughs> I guess I believe something is my years. I don't know. <laughs> Surprise! Five years. It's not like China where it's like okay, take you out back, put a bullet in your head, charge your family, put a bullet. You've heard that, right? Charge your family for the bullet? Yeah. Your family gets a bill for the bullet used to execute it. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> it's, it's awful. It's awesomely hilarious in an invented way. Like, I agree it's awful, but it's also just so fucked up I can't help but laugh. You know? <clears throat> can't help but laugh. Hmm. What's up? Some of the stuff organized. Not sure where to start. 
You want to wear mine? These three drawer organizers are two fifty or two fifty at Dollarama. Yeah. You can't find I can't find them at Dollarama anymore. I might try the one at Scott Road though. But now at Vitz Place they're ten bucks and at London Drugs are twelve something. It's hilarious, isn't it? And that I don't understand how that happened. Well, because it's plastic, it's mobile plastic, you know, it costs like Probably five cents in materials, you know, to make. It's just plastic, right? Yeah, it's just plastic mold. And uh, then for shipping, with whatever it was, and it's pretty light and bulky, I guess. It came over from China, I guess, probably. Where are these made? Probably China. Probably China. Oh, they're made in China. Everything's made in China these days. What's that? Everything's made in China. You gotta get yourself the, the military contracts. Certain things in the states, at least, uh, probably the same for Canada, by, legis by legislation, have to be produced in the states, including things like military uniforms, which makes sense. Because what if you go to the war at the country that's making your uniforms? <laughs> and you're like, oh fuck, we, get, we, we don't have any of our supply uniforms to go. That that would be something. <laughs> um, other things are uh, probably like firearms and guns and all sorts of military equipment. It's probably the same thing. Um, now, there might be rules, because I know Canada makes some military equipment for the states and vice versa. So probably within NATO allies, there's different allowances. I don't know. But yeah, I know. It's the way this, if you uh, get a government military contract, you can be, get pretty set. On the other hand, Colt is filing for bankruptcy. They're, they make the, the bloody Colt 45, which was a sidearm for the states for like 90 years or something. And they're going under. Or, well, they're filing for the creditors. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, I should have bought more Lulu Wars. Yeah, Cheese is playing on the new server too. Why? This for a change? Yeah. yeah. Trolls in the dungeon. So this is kind of funny. When they first, the first model for a, like the standard everyday troll was this. Okay. What is, yeah, just troll. just troll, 32 of 40. What's HM? Yeah, it's like your standard, you know, troll. Then they realized that the proportions were too small compared to, like, the human models, so they came out with a more pro appropriately sized model. Oh, my God. Now, exact same stats. They're, those are models for exact same <laughs> 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 I mean, obviously, if you're going to use them, you're going to use the small one as some kind of miniature version, right? But yeah. It's so kind of funny. Then they came out with the Troll Champions, which are, like, more powerful versions of Trolls. And compare that 
especially to the first one. Like the, it, oh it, dear God! It just could just pop the small one in his mouth, you know. I'm gonna eat you for breakfast. That's kind of funny. That's interesting. Yeah. They did a few things like that. Ogres, I think they did the same thing. They redid the model, and it's like, no, 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 these are the real ogres. Those are the ones they're using. Good marking pen. Ooh, nice. And then we can label the drawers. You know what I mean? Label the drawers? Yeah. For certain right. types of miniatures? So I can write on the front of the drawer what's in the drawer. Like yes. Yeah. Trolls. They're all trolls. Okay, go get your laundry. Good luck. Looks like I'm lagging here at the moment. Cheese will keep us together. Mozzarella or cheddar. Were you successful on your mission to get your laundry? Sorry? Were you successful on your mission to get your laundry? Yes, now my next mission is to pee. Interesting mission. Wish you luck.
glasses. Good job. Let me check. Something here.
feel my mildly annoying powers. Are you able to take me home and possibly eat dinner in 10 minutes, Scott? We don't have to eat right away, but... Sorry, what? Are you able to take me home in 10 minutes? Yeah. And if you're hungry, there's steak and ribs. You just have a little if you want. Looking for a username not taken.
this epic battle. Uh, yeah, just two minutes. I'm just going to finish this battle and then go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. 